I'm too literal of a person. I don't understand sarcasm. Oh, that's a lie. Like I know. Sam. And see where she gets it from. She's <laughs> lying about that. I am not lying. <clears throat> Okay, that's another lie. That's definitely a lie. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to do transformation. Uh, this is one six. Yeah. One, six. We're going to do transformation of graphs and also transformation of functions. Um, the first part is going to be just the graphs themselves. I love testing on this because people do the strangest things. So, well, before I even start, we're going to need something to be able to do this. Thank you, sir. It's a new graph. This is just pure graph paper. We're going to write all over it. PA. It's a drawing. It's a drawing. Function. I'm just going to give you the coordinates. It's uh, down here someplace is <coughs> negative six, uh, negative four. Up here, negative two, zero. And over here, four, negative two. So put that in one, the first grade, top or left. And label it f of x. Because this is the function we're going to be messing around with. And hopefully I gave you enough grids because I'm going to be moving this thing all over the place. You'll also have to do a little room for tables. We're going to have to do a table for one of these. So what happens if I want to take that and graph f of x um, plus 3? What does it mean to change your function by just throwing a plus 3 at the end of it? Go up 3. Go up three. It moves it up 3. What it affects is this. The x value is still the x value, so the domain is not changing. The only thing that's changing is f of x, which is the range, and we're taking the range and adding 3 to it. So all your domain values are still going to be negative 6, negative 2, and 4. It's just your range values are going to change by um, plus 3. So when we add 3 to the first one, you're going to get negative 6, negative 1, so that would be here. The two zero, negative two zero is going to become two three. And the four negative two is going to become four one. Should, do you suggest this to write this on a completely different? You can put it on the same one if you want until you lose track of which one's which. That's why I have several of them. Some of them you're going to want to be able to see what the heck is really going on. Okay, so that one's easy. If it was minus 3, you would just drop the graph. Yeah. 3 okay. units. So the outside number fluctuates this thing up and down. Mm -hmm. Alright, what if I want to graph f of x plus 3? So left or right? Left or right. Left, yeah, left to the right. right. So the right. what I have to kind of figure out is, what does that x plus 3 do? Well, it's changing the domain. But the domain of my original function is from negative 6 to positive 4, so that can't change. f only works on negative 6 to positive 4. So one thing you might want to do before you even start is um, x plus 3 has to eventually equal negative 6. It's the first domain point that I'm talking about. So that means x is going to have to equal negative 9. And that pretty much tells you exactly what this thing is doing. Which way is it really moving in? 
Left. left. To the left. Um, if you look at x plus 3 is equal to the farthest domain, which is 4, you're going to get x is equal to 1. So instead of the domain being negative 6 to 4, it's been shifted to the left to negative 9 to mm -hmm. 1. So when we graph this one, uh, it's going to be... Are we doing it from the first one or the second Yeah, first graph. This is f of x. Okay. So it always goes back to your original function. So that negative 6 now becomes negative 9, but nothing else is changing. So it's still negative 9, negative 4. The negative 2 now becomes... Negative 2, 0 now becomes negative 5, 0. Because you're just taking negative 2 and subtracting 3 from it. And 4, negative 2 now becomes 1, negative 2, which is over here. So the entire graph got shifted 3 units to the left. So this is one thing you have to be cautious of. A plus 3 on the outside, it goes exactly the direction you think it goes, up and down. If it's plus, you go up. If it's minus, you go down. Inside the parentheses, it does exactly the opposite of what you think it does. You're thinking plus 3 moves it to the right, but it actually moves it to the yeah. left. Um, one way of thinking about that is if you go x plus 3 is equal to 0, you're going to get x equals negative 3, which forces you to the left, if you want to think of it that way. All right, so what would the graph of negative 2 plus f of x minus 4 look like? To the original graph, the original f of x way over here. Right 4 down 2. So this one here tells you you're going to go right 4. This one tells you you're going to go down 2. And that makes it a lot easier if you go back to the original one and actually take each point and go right four, down two, right four, down two, right four, down two. So I'm going to do it from the original over here. Well, no, I'm not. Let's see, the original was negative six, four, negative six, negative four, negative two, zero, and So this would be the original graph. And this one, since it's going down 2 and right 4, down 2, yeah, think about this. Right 4 would be right here. And down 2 and right 4 would be right about there. Down 2 and right 4 right about there. So you get a graph that's been shifted like that. Yours will look better because you have grids that you can actually plot these points out. So what is the coordinate of this first point? Um, negative 2, negative 6. Negative 2, negative 6. This one? 2, negative 2. 2, negative 2. 8, negative 4. 8, negative 4. And that would be the coordinates of the new function. It gives you a new domain and a new range. Okay, those are the simple ones. Up, down, left, right. Let's get into the complex ones. Um, I'll redraw my picture. Oops. The easier of the two. Uh, let's go back to our original function, f of x. What was it? Negative 6, negative 4? Negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0. And 4, negative 2, someplace over here. And here's my function. Okay. What if I want to graph um, 2 f of x? And it pretty much becomes a, a decision. Is it affecting the domain or is it affecting the range? It's definitely affecting the range. It has nothing to do with the x. So the x's are going to stay exactly the same, negative 6, negative 2 to 4. So it's only going to take every y value and multiply it by 2. two. So what is that going to do to my graph? Well, negative 6, negative 4 is now going to become negative 12. That does not affect the domain. Negative 6, negative 8. So it goes twice the distance down. 
Yeah. So you get this one down here, negative 6, negative 8. Negative 2, 0 becomes? Same. The exact same coordinate. Yeah. You're on an axis, it doesn't do a darn thing. Oh, x-axis. And 4, negative 2 becomes? 4, negative 4, negative 8. 4, negative 4, so it doubles the distance away from the axis. So this is the new function. There. So it stretches uh, it depends on how you want to talk about it, because you can stretch in two directions. It stretches it. It squishes it along the horizontal and stretches it along the vertical. Which one are you? This one actually stretches along the vertical. This is a better description. All right, so that is two f of x. What would a half x f of x do? It would get it closer to the x axis. The way I think about this is, this one gets it closer to the y-axis. If you put a half in front, it gets closer to the x-axis. We'll be talking about that later. All right, what if we're going to graph, and I'll do this one in blue. What if I want to graph um, f of one-half of x? Oh, I don't think I want to do that, but that's okay. It might not fit on the graph paper. There's a small problem. You do it kind of the same way. If it affects the domain, the best thing to do is to start it. Where does the domain normally start? What's the domain of my original function? Negative, negative 6 negative to six 4. Two. So my domain should start at negative, six. negative six. 6. But the new one, half of x, this x is going to have to be negative, negative 12. Oh. If you solve for x, you're going to get negative 12. So this is our new start. We're going to start way over to the left at negative 12. And where are we going to stop? Well, that would be half of the end of our domain, which is half of uh, half of x is equal to 4. So x is equal to 8. So it takes the domain and it stretches it twice the distance along the x-axis. You're thinking, Oh, it's a half, so it's going to shrink it. No. But that half actually expands it. So if I graph this one, which I'm not going to do. Are you at the 4 with the negative 6 or the 4 with the negative 2? When we're talking about this, we're talking about... That, that's what I thought of. Just the domain. So it would change the first one to negative 12, negative 4? Right. So the first coordinate would be negative 12, negative 4. The next coordinate would be... Negative 4, negative 0. Negative 4, 0. The next coordinate would be... 8, Eight, negative two. And if you plotted those, and only two of them are going to fit on my graph paper, the third one you'd have to kind of guesstimate where it is. But it gets a lot fatter, a lot wider. So if I put a two in there, what would happen? If it was f of two x, it would take it and cut it in half. It would literally take the domain and half the distance of it. That comes in very useful when we talk about trigonometry. When we get there. We'll get there, trust me. It's not that far off. Most of this class is trigonometry. Oh, Sine, <laughs> cosine, tangent, cosine, and cosecant. Yeah. And yet that, that's what we learn about. That is my favorite part of this class. Not yet, Samantha. <laughs> She lost me. You know what's really sad is I did that in 10th grade, wrote it down on a piece of paper, and I used it teaching at Southwest, and it has spread everywhere. Scary. My little saying. G of X. Um, 2 minus... I don't want to do that. That would be too big. 1 half F of 2x. This has everything except a, a horizontal shift. Everything but a horizontal shift. Uh, I got too complex trying to get a horizontal shift in there. Guess I could do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let me just add on a little bit here. Put in uh, minus 2. There. That'll give us a horizontal shift. It's too much. A horizontal shift. Now, where should I start? Probably uh, Should I just take the two and move the graph up two? No. No. That should be the last thing you do. Um, since there's so many things here, the best place to start is find your domain. 
you need what your domain's going to be to affect the rest of the graph. So this one's going to require a table. Oh, goody. Just a small one. And it's going to have multiple columns. Over here, you're going to choose an X. Now, how we're going to choose that X is really determined by this piece here. So you go off to the side and you say, well, 2X minus 2, where does our domain normally start? I've asked this many times already. Two. No. Negative 6. Negative 6. So if our domain normally starts at negative 6, if we solve this equation, we get our new domain is starting at negative 2. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to choose is negative 2. Now we just need to do it to every domain value. So 2x minus 2 is equal to, what's the next one? Uh, neg negative 2. Negative two. 2. So you get 2x is equal to oh, 0, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Zero. So x is equal to zero. So our first domain is going to be negative 2. Our next one is going to be zero. zero. So 2x minus 2 is equal to 4. 2x is equal to 6. x is equal to 3. Sure. All right. So when I choose negative 2, it's associated with the original domain of negative 6. When I choose 0, it's associated with the original domain of negative 2. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, the domains I'm going to choose are negative 2, 0, and 3. That's what I'm going to choose to plug in for x. Now, by choosing those, 2x minus 2, uh, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 2 is negative 6. So we get back to our original three domains. Because I, the function only works on negative 6, 2, and 4. It does not work on negative 2, 0, and 3. But this is our original, this is our domain. These are the points we're going to plot. That's our x coordinate. So wouldn't that be a negative one now? Two? Which one? Uh, this, this, ah, this one. Negative 2. Are we going to go to y now? Yeah, we're going to generate the y a little bit. Now we're going to do f of 2x minus 2. So when x is equal to negative 2, the inside becomes negative 6, and f of negative 6 is equal to? Negative 4. Just negative 4. All right? When we choose x is equal to 0, that corresponds to the inside being negative 2, and f of negative 2 is equal to? 0. 0. When we choose 3, it corresponds to 4 on the inside. f of 4 is? Negative 2. Negative 2. So that gives us our f of 2x minus 2. Then we want to take that and? Half it. Might as well? Negative half it. So negative one half of our f answer. Negative one half of negative four. Positive answer. Positive. Positive. positive two. Positive negative two. one half of zero is zero. Positive. Negative one half of negative two is one. What's the last thing I want to do? Plus two. The last thing we're going to do is that shift up or down, in this case, up. So, 2 plus 2? Two? 0 plus 2? And 1 plus 2? These are the coordinates we're going to plot. Negative 2, 4, 0, 2, 3, 3. Taking the x coordinate from the far left and the y coordinate from the far right. Go for it. You lost me at the f of 2 times negative 2. What, what yeah, this one? Yeah, what number do yeah. plug into the x? All right, you're taking x as negative 2. That's the beginning of our domain, because when I plug it in here, we get negative 6. I'm taking that negative 6 and plugging it back into our function. And f of negative 6 is negative 4. So this piece... Oh, so you're getting the original coordinates back. We're getting the original y coordinates back eventually. Are you always going to get the original y coordinates back? Yeah, because you're trying to plug in the exact same domain. So it should, if it's a point problem like this, you're going to get back negative 4, 0, negative 2, or whatever the point's range is. And then you take half of it, and then you add to it. Sweet. And these, all of this is from here out. To the left of that squiggly line is domain. To the right of it is range. So you manipulate your domain, and then you manipulate your range. Ah, what's the graph look like, anyways? It looks like something. Let's see, negative 2, 4, that's up here someplace. 0, 2, it's right about there. And three, three is like right over here. Looks like a V. It looks like a V. 
The negative takes the graph and flips it over the x-axis. It's not my picture is not even close to what it really looks like. Flips it this way, squishes it this way, and shifts it up. All right, so that's the point question that I definitely have on my test. I give you three points. I put a little line through it, makes it look like an L or a V or an upside down V, and then I ask you to do a manipulation like that one way over there. And you have to do the table to keep your brain straight because if you try to just do it in your head, trust me, you're going to get lost. All right. The rest of it, back to function functions, ones we should know, or are going to know. Base functions. You need to memorize these. You have to know their general shapes. What we're going to be talking about is sketching a graph. The first ones that we did were graphing the graph precisely. These we're going to be talking about a sketch. So what is the difference between a sketch of a graph and a graph of a graph? A what? A sketch of a graph and its graph. The, one of them is actually the actual graph and the right. other one is just the sketch. Right. So one of them if one I'm of going them to grade this, and one of them does so one how many of them have, how many has what? One of them has points. And one of them has many points. The other one has three. One. one. If you plot more than one point on a sketch, it is wrong. Why? Because you only get to plot one. one. That's not fair. The rest of it is just one. the shape of it. You'll see in a second. So when we're doing these, we're going to plot exactly one point and then just have the shape of the graph generally. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a general shape. So to begin with, I'm going to come up with the base functions, but not as sketches. We're going to come up with them as graphs, and then I'm going to sketch them. So the first base function that we're going to do is the square function. f of x equals x squared. When I graph this, the first thing I'm going to do is actually plot some points. But if I plot points, that's called a graph and not a sketch. So this is not allowed on the test. Uh, I guess it's allowed if you want to come up with the base graph and then use the base graph to sketch it. That's fine, as long as it's not your final answer. So you plug in some values. So if I plug in x equals negative 2, you get 4 someplace up here. If I plug in x equals negative 1, you get 1. Negative 1 squared, 1. If I plug in 0, 0. If I plug in 1, one squared is one. If I plug in two, two squared is four. So the general shape of x squared parabola. is a parabola. That is wrong. Hmm? That is wrong. That's wrong. It's not a sketch. Ah, that's not the sketch yet. The sketch of a parabola is just this. Plot one point, the origin, and it has a general shape that looks like this. So this one is a graph, this one is a sketch. Etch a sketch. Etch a sketch. I still love them. I have one. Etch a sketch. All right, another base function. Um, f of x equals x cubed. Graph it first, and then we'll deal with the sketch. Um, one, two. If I let x equal negative 2, no. Negative 8. Yeah. It's negative 2 to the third power, which would be negative 8. That's someplace way down here. I'm not even going to plot it properly, but it's way down. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 cubed is? Please don't say negative 3. It's going to be positive 1. It's going to be negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. 0? Zero. Zero. One, one, <laughs> two, eight, someplace way up here. So the graph of this looks something like that. It actually, when you get close to zero, you have to be careful here. When it gets close to zero, this thing actually flattens out a little bit. Like that. You'd have to pick a lot more points to show that flattening. So the sketch of it, obviously, would just be this little snake 
going through the order. Down on the left, up on the right. All right. f of x equals the square root of x. Got to erase some stuff. What value should I pick here? Two, four. Kind of giving you a hint. What should be the starting value? Zero. 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 Can I pick negative one? No. 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 Negative one is not part of the domain, so the best I can do is pick zero. What's the square root of zero? Zero. zero. So that would be here. Um, I forgot to put my marks. One, two, three, four. That should be good. One, two. Square root of one? <laughs> no, that's square root of negative one. Square root of positive one is just plain old one. One, because one times one is one. Can I do the square root of two? Sure, on a calculator, but I'd really rather not. Four. Skip to four. Square root of four. Two. Two is up here. So you get this curve that starts at the origin and curves up like this. It's a very, very slow growing graph. The next one would be square root of nine, which would give you three. Square root of 16, which would eventually give you four, and so forth and so on. So the sketch of it, you start at the origin and you draw this. By the way, it's half of that lying on what? its side. It's half of this graph lying on its side. I don't. It's okay if you don't. I got that much. Rotate it. Erase the bottom. F of x equals the absolute value of x. Oh, the absolute value is this. Yeah, it's the V thing. Everything is positive. <laughs> the absolute value forces everything to be positive, so even if you're on the negative side, it becomes positive. positive. So if I take negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is? 3. three. Absolute value of negative 2? Two? 2. Negative 1? One? 1. 0? One. Zero. 0. 1. 1. 2. 2. 3. 3. Okay. What kind of graphs are these on both sides of this? Straight lines. Straight lines. What's the slope of this line? Um, one. one. What's the slope of this one? Negative, negative one. Negative Don't do angles. I'm That's sorry, I'm sorry. All right, last one. Do I have enough room? Probably not. F of x equals the cube root of x. I'll try to squeeze it in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two. It'll fit. I'll squeeze it. So, first number I can plug in here that's nice. Zero. Zero is always good. It gives us the origin. Another one. Can't you do negatives on this one? Definitely. So cube okay. roots of negatives are perfectly fine. Negative one. Cube root of negative one is? Negative one. Negative one. Which one? Negative one? Negative one. Negative one. Cube root of positive one? One. One. It'll go up here. And then the next number that's nice? Negative four, negative eight. Negative eight, that's why I went out that far. So cube root of negative eight? Two. 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 Negative two. Negative two. Cube root of positive eight? Two. two. Positive two. So your graph is going to look like this. Which looks a lot like this. Except for right. Lying on its side and flipped. Lying on its side and flipped. So there is some kind of relationship between x squared and the square root of x, and the cube function and the cube root of x. We'll be talking about that later. All right, so what am I going to do with all these pictures? You have to know each and every one of them. Because what I'm going to do is manipulate it, move it around the graph, you know, up, down, left, right, squished, squashed, um, stretched, all those type of things. But you have to know the general picture first before you can start manipulating. Okay, if you take x squared, the x squared graph, and the square root of x, does that mean their does that mean their points are like switched to? Uh, yes. Every I'll coordinate see. is flipped, except you have to erase this part. Okay. Yeah, it, we'll get to that later. But yeah, the coordinates are all flipped. Domain Wait, and range. The domain and range are flipped. All right. So real quick, we should know how to draw. Oh, that was horrible. We should know how to draw this. It's good, I'm hoping. 
What's hundred? Yeah, no guarantees. This is no different than the point graph. You just have to look at it in a new way. When you look here, what function am I really dealing with? What base function? X squared. X squared, so it's a parabola. What's the inside tell you to do? I mean, you go left. Left, too. So inside parentheses is always opposite direction. It's always left or right. So this one is left, two. All right. What is this four doing? Up four. So that would be up four. What is this negative doing? Which way? You can either go across the y-axis or across the x-axis. It's going to go across the y-axis. X-axis. X-axis. It's affecting the range values. It's affecting the range values, so that's the y values that are changing. So if you have a positive y value, it becomes negative y value. So this is going to flip over oops, y axis. Oh, now you got me saying x axis. Flip over the x axis. All right, so when I graph this, I'm going to give you a technique that's going to work for most of these. The first thing you're going to do on your graph paper is put in your left 2 as a dotted line. So you're going to graph in x equals negative 2. So over here, um, you're moving your entire graph, literally, left 2 units. So this dotted line becomes known as what's called a um, transformed axis. Some books call it y prime. Um, some books call it V. Um, I'll just call it V. So this becomes known as the V-axis. All right, the up 4 gives you another one, but it's going to be horizontal, and you get the equation Y equals 4. This one gets called U. And so you start talking about vectors, and then you can't call them U. What number is U? U is, well, what do you mean? It's the X-axis moved up okay. 4 units. So this is your up 4. Where they intersect is guaranteed to be the one point you can plot. That is the only point you can plot on your graph. It is the origin point of your parabola. Now, the only thing you have to figure out now is, well, it flips over the x-axis. So instead of facing up from this point, it's going to be facing yeah. down. And when I mean flip over the x-axis, I really mean over this new u-axis. So it flips down, and you get a graph that looks something like that. Uh, that's it. That's all I want you to do. So all you want to do is sketch it? Huh? Oh, I, I okay. want one plotted point. The rest of it is just general shape of the curve. Oh, I guess better. Well, I Until I, I do something weird to it. Okay. You wouldn't do that. Would you? Yes, so does it matter how ugly That would never be on a test. It's way too easy. What? Does it matter how ugly it is? As long as it has a general shape. Why are you doing that in our test? I'm just thinking of something that <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you just see my little snake over here. Have you seen my stick figures? Oh, Hopefully not. Figures oh. 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 So, how about this one? Um, oh, my God. What if I want to grab f of x is equal to. Negative 3 minus the square root of 4 minus x. This one has one extra little layer that makes things horrible. What do you think makes us the worst? Negative. Which negative? There's three of them. That one? Yes. 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 Yeah. That one makes us the worst. This one just flips you over the Oh, that's because it's flipping it over the Yes, and the danger of flipping over the y is a lot of people think it flips it over the y and moves four to the left, but it actually moves four to the right. right. And, then and i got to show you an easy way to figure that out. Why does it move to the right? You'll see. Wait, so is it four to the right and then flip it Yeah. When I type in a number into four minus x, what kind of number does it have to be? Positive. It has to be positive, zero or positive. So I'm going to take 4 minus x and set it greater or equal to 0. And solve. Do you remember how to solve inequalities? Yeah. Let's see. Minus 4. Minus 4. So you get negative x is greater or equal to negative 4. And then divide by x. 
Divide by negative one. Please don't divide by that. Divide by negative one. If you divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. Yes. So this one is actually facing to the left, but it's four units to the right. So it's a very confusing thing. So this is the best way to figure out which way it's going. Why is it negative four? Where are you? Huh? Oh, I subtracted negative four, or subtracted four across becomes negative four. Divide both sides by that negative in front of the x. When you divide by a negative, you've got to flip the inequality. So what's the graph of this look like? Well, the rest of it is, what does this negative 3 do? Down 3. Um, this sign here is going to flip it over x-axis. And this literally flipped it over the y-axis, by the way, because square roots are usually pointing in this direction, and this one's going to be pointing in that direction. So it got flipped over the y-axis. And then we can draw, well, at least get a good drawing of it. Uh, I better do the whole time. Maybe. So I need um, down negative 3, so I'm going to have a horizontal line at negative 3, dotted line, down here. So this is our new u. It's down 3. And this thing is moving to the 4 uh, 4 to the right. right. So we're going to have this line here. This will be our new axis V. And the only point I can plot is where they cross. So that gives me this point here. And the rest of it is this. It gets flipped over the x-axis, so it's below the u-axis. And it's pointing uh, that way. So you start here, and you go like that. That's the square root graph, flip to flip. You totally got that. You totally got that? Okay, so wait. Wait. The lie. The lie. So wait. I got one. What? Yeah. Could you flip it over that way? Yeah. And then, okay. You can start it up here at the beginning. And it'll be that and the yeah. Flip over this way. And then it goes upside down. Flip over this way and then shift it down and over. And it lands right here. Yeah. But it's better just to do it, you know, get the axis where you want it to start, and this just tells you which way it's pointing, and you already know yeah. it's below. Definitely. So you get that. Yeah. So. On, on, like, the test and stuff, are we going to have to do something like that, or have each yeah. point? No, no, I don't want each in each graph of each transformation. Yeah. No, I don't want you to go, oh, <laughs> no, take this no. graph and flip it no, over the y-axis, I mean? flip it over the x-axis, and then move it, yeah. Like, at the end, do you want us to put, like, each? Like graph points on it. I just want that one point. That's it. And then the, the shape. Okay. That's all I want. If you put more than one point on, it's wrong. It's not a sketch. Four to the right. It's not a sketch. It's a graph. The four to the right came from where? The four from the right came from this inequality, because the domain of this thing starts at four and goes that way. So the graph is starting at four. And if you think about it, if you plug in four, four minus four is that would be the origin point where it normally should have started. So it got shifted four to the right. Another way of looking at it, if you really want to get technical, if I take four minus x, let me just show you. If I take four minus x and factor out a negative one, this becomes negative four plus x, right? Which is the same thing as negative one times x minus four. If you just looked at x minus four as being in parentheses, that one tells you that it moves four to the right. This tells you it flips over to the y-axis. Oh, that's cool. But I like this way better because it tells you exactly which way it's going. Oh, no, I, like I like the other way, way better. better. Like well, you could do it the other way then. That's it. So the split. Because that's what actually what makes it close. Flips it over the Y. It's the only one that you can see flipping over the Y. All the other ones are symmetrical, which is boring. So, so the reason why it flips over the Y is because it's a square root? Yeah. See, I thought you were saying that Well, it flips over because it's opposite of the X. That's literally why it flips over the Y. But this is the only graph that you're going to see right now that you can actually see that it actually flips over the Y. Okay, what happens if there was a, negative, a square root of negative 4 plus X? Then it would just be X minus 4 it moves 4 to the right and faces that way. Because the X is a G minus. Huh? The X is a G minus. See, this is negative X. So only when the X is negative, it flips over the Y axis. But then that 4 becomes, does it move 4 to the right, 4 to the left? So either do it this way or do it this way. It's one of the two. Uh, let's make it worse. 
How much time do I got? I got time. Let's make it worse. What? That just turns out ugly. All right, what's different about this one than all the rest so far? You put your eggs cube. You put it on cube. Oh, uh, cube's fine. That's that's not different. That we know the um, general shape. Um, there's a three on the outside of the oh, right. this. Oh, that thing is going to do something strange to the graph. Right. Um, with coordinates, it. it just made them three times as tall, right? And so it's going to stretch it along the y-axis. It's going to shrink it. The language gets really weird because you can shrink it this way and you can shrink it this way. So you have to be really careful. It's shrink it this way. stretching along the y axis or squishing along the x axis. We'll, we'll wait. So I have a better way of describing it. What's the three do? The outside three. Up three. Up three? Yeah, up three. So get your new axis in there. What's this two do? Right two. Right two. Yeah. Because it goes opposite of what you think. Does. We'll deal with the three absolutely last. When you get to my test, it actually asks you to do two graphs. It asks you to graph without the three as a dotted line graph, and then put the three back in as a solid line graph. Wow. So I'm going to because you need to, a reference. I didn't know that. Oh, we did. Way back there. Wow, your voice travels. I thought it was you that. It's one of those I did no. too. I, no. I, was, I, I didn't ask that. I didn't ask that. <laughs> Don't blame me. It was <laughs> Throwing your voice. <laughs> it was. He's going to get you in trouble. He's going to start cursing back there. I'm going to think of you. Okay. I hate Mr. Kalarn. What? He said it. Okay. So let's get our reference lines in there first. Um, right two would be right here. I'm going to be a little bit more precise with this graph. And up three would be right here. Okay. So the only guaranteed point on our graph is going to be here. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. You was wrong, Micah. Now. I'm going to kind of ignore the three. So the first graph I'm going to do is g of x is equal to x minus 2 all q plus 3. Just the regular transformation of a cube uh -huh. graph. And I'm only going to do it as a dotted line. So what does a cube graph generally look like? It looks like this. It's that snake thing that goes like this. Okay. The one that flat Down on the bottom, flat to zero. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> so, it generally has this shape. <laughs> oh, I, the I don't even know what that is. That's the G of X. Oh, is, it, wait, is that crossing it at two, zero, it two? It crosses right here at two, three. Oh, I don't care where it, oh. it's just the general shape you're looking okay. for. Now, we have to put the three back into play. So what the three is going to do it's going to take this coordinate here and make it three times as high. Or it's going to take this coordinate here and make it three times as high. So which side of the graph is this going to go on? Towards the vertical or towards the horizontal? Towards the vertical. So I think of it as it squishes it in towards the vertical. So if it's one or bigger, it's going to get closer to the vertical line we dotted in. All right, on this side, if I choose this point and go three times as low, is it going to get closer to the horizontal or closer to the vertical? Vertical. Vertical. So my graph is going to go here on the inside of those dotted lines. Okay. So that shows me that you understand what the three does. The dotted line, you're either going to go outside of it or inside of it. What does that do to the points? Well, it just makes it grow quicker. 
you want to think of it as like stock prices. Um, so like stock it prices. grows three times as fast. So if you have a slow growing stock, it has a slow. Yeah, but if you were given points and you were told to make it, I was just describing it. So uh, okay. let me generalize it. Be great. Generalization. Some people like this part. Yeah. I meant in the sense it gives you something to look at to figure out what the heck you're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, if I let g of x equal a times f of x, and all we're really concerned about is a. So if the absolute value of a is bigger than 1, in other words, I could care less if it's positive or negative, I'm just looking at the absolute value of it, then graph gets closer to vertical axis. The new one, not the y-axis, just the vertical axis that we dotted in. The absolute value. The absolute value, because you don't care if it's positive or negative. You just care about its value. If the absolute value of A is between 1 and 0, give me a number between 1 and 0. 0. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, 0. 0.25, 1 quarter. Is 3 halves between 1 and 0? No, I've had many people do that to me. They're like, well, it's a fraction. It's between 1 and 0. No, it's not. It's 1.5. It's 1.5, yeah. The graph gets closer. Take a guess. To the x-axis? To the horizontal. This way, you don't say the word squeeze, squish, pull. Books have all different ways of describing it. This is very clear. If it's bigger than 1, it gets closer to the vertical. If it's less than 1 and bigger than 0, it gets closer to the horizontal. It just makes more sense that way. Okay, so that's graphing.